I'm going to do this over and I just won't use number one. Uh, this is this week's video. It's a real short opening. Basically, it's a lot of the stuff I've been working on primarily last weekend when I got some extra time after I finished the collet thing. There is a piece of the collet video that didn't get put in this week's video will be added. Uh, basically, uh, then showing how close they indicated it. Uh, you're going to see some thread, uh, how I helped some brass rod and I threaded. I made some nuts for the truck. Working on making Christmas hammers. Uh, there are going to be some like YouTube stuff. Uh, you'd seen earlier that in a video, probably this week you're going to see this is a piece of stainless that's going to be used in the hammer. Uh, so basically, it's going to be like a hodgepodge of different stuff. Uh, pictures, just, you know, just kind of catching up some projects been done. I'm going to kind of make a, a weekend shop talk out of some catch up stuff. Uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy it. I'm doing a quick closing. I'm not going to yammer on a whole lot this week. I'm just trying to get to you and get it to you and get you into the meat of the video. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Well, I hope the iPhone will focus for us. Because it's going to be close to trying not to. If it does, it does. See, that's good. And that's after I've taken Now, folks, that's after I've taken it off and putting it back on. Now, basically, and I'll turn you around here. I'm using an iPhone. Basically, what I've done is I've made the register a little bit loose. Compensate for the machining. And I took an indicated... To right here. Now I know we you could suppose but you could put the problem is the cops are gonna, gonna be that dang close. If I can get the spindle within a half thousand, so I'm gonna live with what run out I got. If I need it to be any closer than what I'm gonna use it for, folks, I'll indicate the damn part in there. Excuse my French, but that looks pretty good to me. Um, my GoPro died. So that's what he that's what she looks like here. <laughs> That's the that's my collet mount, <clears throat> and basically this is a regular Grizzly back plate. This here I picked up on eBay. It's an ER32 mount, and this is the little piece of aluminum that I machined to adapt all everything together. So that is it, folks. I know uh, you have seen my drill the sharpener before, and but I was just going to knock a drill out. I've got a bunch of drills to sharpen. But in case some of the people are new to my channel, I'm going to go ahead and set the drill sharpener up right quick and do some drills. Do a drill. And This drill is one that I was using to counter bore the, the uh, um, uh, to counter bore my um, toilet plate. So it's going to be noisy. So let's hold on. <laughs> Folks, I like to be careful is you can you got to get the right back relief in these drills. So. See if you'll notice this when I'm up the camera focus. You see how this is coded you see where I'm starting. That's where we gotta start from. Make sure that's the right relief.
there's the drill. Like I say, this is just one I used the other day, so I just needed to hit it right quick. So I thought just before I put it up, I've got drills sitting everywhere. So okay, okay. Today I'm gonna make a little simple black knob. I already turned it just a little bit. Again, I'm not worried about size. The, the, I just want a little old simple plastic one for my um, tightening handle because the, the one that was on it just would not get it. So we're going to knock out a simple one. And this whole loose here, we're going to do this right fast while you're on the camera. There we go. There goes the drill. Center drill. Half the drill. This is plastic, so you know it can take a whole heck of a lot. Again, you just want to make sure it's straight. I got, don't you know, I, I, I have never got fussed at by my subscribers over these tricks I do. But you would think one of my, uh, somebody would come along and say, don't you have a tap guide? <laughs> yeah, I do. I actually got a spring-loaded one. Problem with that is, old Jim's lazy as hell, and I'm gonna get me some more spiral flute taps. Wish I could buy them in a set. I love them. But I mean, this is gonna be a simple old job. We're going to just cut this end off. I'm just making a simple, straight black knob. I don't want no knurling on it, and just something to kind of cushion. I had a hard knob on it actually and it just you know that's one thing I wish there was a way I could fix this I don't not like that where that down handles at now people this is plastic darling to be exact one of these blocks this is Durlin to be exact. So it don't have to have a lot of... I like you, I've learned to use my feet right I tell you what, I, I, I've gotten lazy. These cross feeds on this grizzly. It just absolutely made me stinking lazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't care, I want these to be a little rounded because they're more. Alright, let's pop the feet like that here yeah, and let the feet make do its thing. This is plastic, so it'll just cut it off, slip and scrap. Well, I'll be dipped in poop. I mean, that work. Folks, I goofed up. I drilled it too deep. Well, so I'm going to make another one. I'm not going to bore you with drilling and tapping, but I'm going to make another one. 
because I don't like that I goofed up. I'm just going to turn a little off the OD just to clean it up for a bit. These are used rods anyway that I've got. I've sent a, I've given some to a couple other guys or contributors. Um, sent it to them from the use and uh, in projects. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead. Trick here is I've already got a center hole now. And the other mess up that you have seen. The other trick of Bozo the Clown. After I looked at it, I needed it to be a little longer in the damn way. So. Mr. Bozo made his appearance here at Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Well, you could see me tap another hole. Goody, goody gun drop for you. Started. It ain't going nowhere. All right. Now let's put the cutoff tool in it and file up these corners, and we'll make this little knob right quick correct this time. Not bozo fied. Bozo fied. One thing. Idea. There we go. Like the other one was. Bozo fied. No. Well, let's put the canuber back in there and do a little quick facing, and then we'll have a completed canaber. How does that sound? You like a canaber dabber? A naber dabber? Tell you that block fits closer to Dick's hat then. When I made mine, I machined that sucker off good, good ways because
now we got enough, boys and girls. That is enough. Now I got one that I can, this one will turn, thank goodness, turn up the machine. Let me turn this off. You know. In case you wanted, I changed a, uh, a different insert so I could get in there. I'm taking about probably 200,000. This stuff don't spray nothing out. Right now, it does hit you. It's nothing. It's like a sawdust. Oh, I don't know what it is. It's sort of like sawdust, but it does hit you, see. It don't do much, and it just sort of rolls up. What we're trying to do is make a, a like I say, a one inch rod, and I just don't have any one inch. Uh, yeah, I thought I had an inch and a quarter, but I don't. So, again, this is for hammerheads, so it don't have to be exact. All right. That's uh, 260. 40, 60 is 200, right there. And that's, yeah, that's, that's 180. About right there would be good. Fun to cut it. See now, that's what we're doing. This is whacking it down. So sometimes you have to use what you got. Again, that should get us close. We're working to get it to a size. So about 150. Let's get it all moved up here. Move back. Let's move this tailstock up a little bit. Drive us up this way and give us a little bit more driver. Okay, we got 150 there. Okay, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Let's do it. Let's hold it. Let's touch it off again. I might got my brains messed up. 20, 40, 50, 60, 70. Whoa, whoa. 
20, 40, 60, try 80 and let's see what we're doing. get this other side now I know there's always a little bit of run out you know these lays are not perfect <laughs> Well, you see, I left a little piece. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to make these things wherever I got the hammer at. They're going to be made a little over a half inch. So I'm going to try to drill these a little deeper than the core. effectively and uh, so that'll work really good for that so so I need to make three of these so Thing 
open in that and it's not. Well, I'll check that because that just don't feel like it's. Well, it didn't drill as deep as I thought it did. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Well, let's have to re drill it. See, that's, we're going to have to go a little deeper than 350. The problem with doing this, you really got to get the tap trying to make these shallow holes. I may have to go, I think I've got some taps that I've, I've actually got the ends ground off to do some of this with. So. Well, we're working on the Christmas hammers, I guess, and you see I'm getting a start. So this is this year's Christmas hammers, and I've, I've made Christmas hammers for friends for several years. Uh, they're, you know, you've seen the little one I use, and it's a little, it's a little shop hammer, basically a piece of stainless with a stainless rod and aluminum handle. I had some extra time today so I thought I'd go ahead and work on them. I've still got to face every one of them off but what I'm doing today is right now this is more or less like you say making the blanks up. Uh, I kind of goofed it earlier and I probably well I ain't going to use it. I thought that I had bigger uh, brass than I did. 
Well, I don't. So. And what you see me doing here is screwing in set screws. And the set screws is what holds the two pieces together. The, the, uh, um, where's the, so this holds the, uh, um, excuse me, it holds the, set screws are fours to alright let's find us a little gear here turn into brass thread. You know, I wonder so. I wonder. Let's see. at 220. It's a little faster. Since it's brass, it shouldn't be a big difference. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It's not chattering or anything, so that's cool. That works. 
Now, now we face them. I'm just going to do one, and uh, I'm not going to do the plastic. I mean, it's not a big deal. You've seen me face stuff, but all I'm going to do is I just touch the tool. Kind of lightly hit the face. Knock the nib off of him. like I wanted to. Let me try a different tool. That just ain't what I want. For some reason it just didn't take quite take the nib off. So I'll just have to, I'm gonna go back and do that one. Well that's funny. That one's way above center. What the hell? Was on cinnamon. Well, maybe I just need to go a hair bit more and just try a hair bit more. I didn't get enough of a cut, that's what it was. Light skim, all I'm doing is just basically taking a thigh or two off and just enough to get the, y'all want that face slick. No nib. Okay, we'll live with that. These are the heads for the. I always laughingly call these my Christmas hammers because most of the time they're for gifts. So, and that's what these are for. So, that's what you're seeing. And this is mine. Now, I'm making them a little different. This is my personal one. This is the first one I made. It's the one I use here in my shop. Uh, my personal hammer is actually three-quarter aluminum, and that hammer there, these are going to be on a one-inch. Scaled it up a little bit, and, and we'll put a little thicker out of it. I got the stainless in order. This is stainless here, and this is stainless. This is aluminum. I'm going to double-check, but I may have to order a piece of aluminum, too. So, here it is. Okay. We're doing eBay purchases. This is a piece of one inch stainless that I'm gonna make Christmas hammers out of. And uh, that's kind of what this is. This is this is Monday the 23rd, right before Thanksgiving that's come in. I've got some other eBay purchases and things that, and uh, stuff that I'm gonna be putting in, so you'll be seeing. So that's what we got. Thank you. Okay, this is this week's tool purchases and uh, I told you a little earlier that I've been in the buying mode. This is, excuse my finger, this is an Eagle Rock clone or uh, Nerver. Uh, I really wanted a better Nerver than the ones you've been seeing in the video. This one looks really good if you look at it. The, the Nerls, the Nerls itself fit in there really, really good. And, uh, this is here is from Travis too, Travers Tool, and it was actually uh, 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 they have an eBay store. So this this one come from eBay, and I'm thinking I can't remember exactly. I think it's like sixty, 
60, uh, it's under 80 bucks for the Nerva. And you know, the Eagle Rocks are very expensive. I mean, you know it's an import, but it looks very rigid. It doesn't have a lot of beefiness, you know, a lot of stuff to it. So it looks real rigid. I'm looking forward to getting it down to the shop. And you know, I was complaining the other day when we was making the adapter plate for the Collets system. And um, you would uh, see that this is a brand new bandsaw blade from a saw. And I like pr I, I, um, the the bar the bimetals I like to use is the Sterrets. Uh, this is basically the my favorite blade. It's a 14, 18 pitch blade. It's a good all around, excuse my finger again. It's a good all around blade. Uh, you just can't hardly beat them. And I really like them. And this is what I use in my saw pretty much all the time. I usually get it from Amazon. This one was 38 bucks for shipping. So that's this week's well, so far, and I'm going to add this into the video that we're going to cut that you're going to be seeing. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, or my YouTube family, as someone like Mr. James Green will say. This is my latest eBay purchase as it came. This is the day before Thanksgiving. This is two pieces of one inch aluminum. This is going to be handles for my Christmas hammer project that you're going to be hearing about some. Uh, this is going to be the actual knurled handles to be made out of this one inch here, aluminum. This piece of stainless is, is a little bit bigger than a quarter, it's five, uh, five eighths. And this is going to be the center rod. And my other favorite stuff in the world, Loctite 648. This is bearing retainer compound, basically green Loctite. And this stuff don't come off. For applications, I use it for stuff that I'm putting together that I'm not taking apart. Basically, you've seen my uh, brass nuts that's on my truck, and such things as that. That's where the 648 comes into play. That way I put it together, I don't worry about it. When I make these hammers, the shutter shaft will be Loctited. Uh, I think I took a video the other day or yesterday of the stainless steel along with the knurling tool and the saw blades. Are, I've got all of them involved here, so they're here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. When I get it together, there'll probably be some additions along the way as it goes along. Um, like I said, it's catching pieces and I'll probably start working on it to early. So sometime after Thanksgiving weekend, I'm, I'm gonna be busy most of the weekend so I've got some stuff in the can. I'm going to put it together for you. Hope you enjoy it. And, and like I say, always comment, rate, and surprise, subscribe, excuse me, answer the questions. You know, if you answer anything, I always try to get back to you. And if you want to ask anything, we're doing. So uh, I appreciate the subscribers, the new subscribers I've got. We're growing a little bit along. I know I don't have the fancy editing and stuff some of the other guys use. And I really want to keep it simple. I think uh, for me, it's not about as much the education. It's more about showing how much you can do yourself and fun. There's plenty of resources on the internet, especially YouTube for education. And I'm kind of thinking this is just kind of what I do. It's what I do and how I take on little projects. So I hope you enjoy it and have a good one.